Greetings Earthlings, uh, Joel at Earth Tools here and we're going to do a little video on handlebar adjustments on a Grillo walk behind tractor. Now this model we've got here is a brand new G110 Grillo, which is kind of the, the better selling tractor at this point in time. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about in terms of adjustments applies to all Grillo walk behind tractors, G85, G85D, G107, of course the G110 and the G131 all have similar handlebar systems. Some of the controls might be in a little different location, like your handlebar release lever to adjust the handlebars left and right. In, in a, on a 110, it's right here. On some of the, uh, on a G85D, it's over here. On a 107, I believe it's over here. So regardless, the criteria are gonna apply for all those different styles. So the things to know about the handlebar system, of course, is that a, it's what links you to the tractor. So anytime you're maneuvering the tractor around, it's doing, you're doing it via the handlebars, obviously. And those handlebars are going to wear and get loose, both at the pivot points for the handlebars, where things pivot up and down, where they pivot left and right, and where the handlebars are held to the top of the tractor, which you've got, you've got uh, two places where that's held together. We've got this bracket here, which is what we're going to call the pivot bracket because this this is the bracket that supports the pivot post. This the uh, the handlebar column comes down and it's essentially the female half. It's like the, it slips over a male. The male is like a big solid steel post that sticks up like this. The handlebars come down over it and can pivot left and right like so. So this is the pivot support bracket. This is the base bracket. So this is actually affixing the handlebars to the top of the, of the silver transmission housing. So one thing to check at least once a year is to make sure these fasteners are tight. These are the four you know, fasteners, whether they be nuts or bolts, that are holding this whole handlebar system onto the top of the tractor. Obviously, these are good and tight, but you know, if you use the tractor for three or four years, those might loosen up. So you want to keep on top of that because if they if you, they loosen up and you don't catch it, then you're going to break off bolts, and drilling out broken bolts is no fun at all. Um, you can also check these great big nuts and bolts here. These go. These link the base assembly with the pivot post assembly. These nuts and bolts actually run through rubber mounts. You can see the rubber here. Um, there's actually rubber that goes all the way through that piece of tubing, both front and back. There's two of these things. Those are not very likely to loosen up, but it's good to check them every now and then, you know, maybe every five years or something. Just put a big wrench on each end and check them. Uh, the more common place for wear to occur is where the handlebars have to move, that is at the pivot points. So again, I'm gonna move this thing, uh, I'm releasing my pivot lever and this thing pivots left and right. So what, I'm, what I want here is I want the handlebars to pivot easily on that pivot post, but not have a lot of slop. If the handlebars like, you know, can move around on that pivot post, that's no good. Well, the way Grillo has, a, has built this thing, the, the bottom end of this, the handlebar column is slotted. They've got a slot right here. They've got a piece of steel stuck in that slot, but this is an open, an open slot from top to bottom. And these two bolts here, bolts and nuts, are pinching that slot together. So it's, it can basically take this piece of steel that's wrapped around that pivot post and close it up, okay? So you can make it tighter on the pivot post. It's a real easy, to way, easy way to adjust how much slop is in the system. Now, uh, from experience, I would say these are actually a little bit on the loose side right now. I want to I want to have these tight enough where I'm exerting a little effort to to swing the handlebars around or adjust them left and right. Not a lot of effort, but right now there's almost no drag at all. It's like they're just loose as a goose. So I'm going to go ahead and um, well before I before I put the wrench on them though, I'm going to make sure they're well lubricated. So I'm going to stick my spray nozzle. Of, this is fluid film, but you can use anything. Just squirt up in here give it some shots of lube to make sure that surface, you know, that male-female mating surface is nice and well lubricated uh, because that will get dry and squeaky. Now I'm going to bring down these pivot nuts and bolts a little bit, kind of bring them down evenly, and I'm going to check the tension. I'm going to swing the handlebars left and right again. Look out, Caleb, I don't want to knock you in the head. Caleb Ashcraft is our uh, film guy today. Yeah, this is good. I have to. I can still move them easily, but there's a little resistance, so they're they're tightened properly. 
Uh, but if you let a tractor go five or ten years and never adjust those, you'll notice the handlebars get really loose. And if they get loose enough, it can actually uh, seriously wear things because they, especially this reverser um, on the on the G110 and some of the old G107 machines, you have this smart reversing system that automatically inverts the function of the reverser system when you turn the handlebars around. And that's operated by a couple little gears right here, some uh, kind of stamped steel gears that flip those components over. You can see that indexing this piece around, well, if those handles get super sloppy, those gears can actually slip, and then you get out of time on your reverser adjustments. That's something you want to keep up with. I'd say once a year is a good time to do it when you're just kind of doing a once over on the tractor. Now, uh, we'll talk about the reversing pin, which is what I was using right here. When I, when I push down on this lever right here to release the handlebars and allow them to pivot, or, you know, what, d d well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that control is going to be in different locations depending on the tractor. So if it's a G107 and that release lever is over here, same thing. That, that lever is going to be connected via a cable, in this case right here, to a pin down here at the bottom. There's a, there's a spring-loaded pin inside this little tube. That spring-loaded pin drops into one of these three holes to locate the handlebars in that particular position. There's also three holes around this side for when the handlebars are spun around in the opposite orientation, that is the front PTO mode. So what I want to be sure of is that, there's, that, is that cable is adjusted appropriately. So here's the criteria. These holes, as you can see, are just kind of square cut holes. The bottom of the pin, the locking pin, is actually a taper. We can't see it because it's kind of hidden under here. Uh, you can kind of see it going up and down right there. But it's a, it's a tapered pin. So what will happen is, as the handlebars wear, as you work with the tractor, and that pin is pushing the tractor back and forth, so that's taking a lot of stress. That pin, which is at a taper, and it's contacting a hole that's drilled through like this, it's just contacting on the very corners of that hole. So what happens is the hole wears a little bit. It started out like this, but it starts to wear like this to accommodate the shape of that taper. Also, the taper will wear a little bit. The pin will wear itself. Usually, most of the wear occurs on the lower bracket because the pin is harder. But the fact is that's going to seat in so that as, the, as wear occurs on the two components, the pin is going to move down further into the hole. It's going to drop into the hole further. If the cable is adjusted too tight, what happens is the pin drops down into the hole, comes up. It, it, can't, it can only drop a certain amount because the cable is so tight it, it like, lets it go down, say, one millimeter. And then it can't go down anymore because the cable is taut at this point. And if you continue using the tractor, which of course you're going to, then all of a sudden the pin just stops contacting both sides of the hole. Instead of being tightly snugged into that hole, it moves back and forth. And you start to get all this slop and it starts to wear that hole oval instead of being round. And you, you move the handlebars like two or three inches to the top before the tractor actually starts to move. Well, you want to avoid that. You always want to make sure that that cable is adjusted with slack in the cable. And how you can tell that is there's slack in the handle right here. So that's that right there means that there's that much slack in the cable. I have to push it down to here, and then when I push it down that extra bit, that's when it's lifting the pin. This right here is not lifting the pin at all. That's slack. That's fine. As long as it's adjusted tight enough that when I push it down fully, I can adjust the handles and it doesn't the pin doesn't drag at the bottom. So I'll adjust it out. I'll kind of adjust it badly here. I'll back out this adjustment bolt to tighten up the cable. And now, when I go over here to the handle, there is no slop at all. It's taut. As soon as I push this down, I'm raising the pin at the bottom. That's no good. That's going to get into trouble. That's going to get you into trouble pretty fast because as soon as that pin starts to wear or the hole starts to wear, you're not going to be contacting fully and it's going to wear that thing badly. So, what you want to do is bring this in. Put as much slack now if i put too much slack in it if i run this thing all the way into where there's just a ton of slack here then it still clears but i can tell that pin is actually dragging on the steel down there which is no good you just you want to have it somewhere in between so we're going to back that out give it about a half an inch of slop at the top 
that's your criteria. Okay. Now, if you need to service this pin, if you let this tractor sit outside in the rain and a bunch of water runs down in here and actually rusts this pin in place and you need to take this handlebar column up off of here to get that cable or to get this pin broken loose, or if your cable breaks, you know, in 10 years because it just wore out and you need to replace it, again, you need to remove the handlebar column. The way you do this, and I'm not going to do it completely, but I'll show you the, the, the idea of how it's done on any Grillo tractor. You take out these two nuts and bolts, and then, but when those are completely removed, this silver piece, which is sandwiched between the handlebars, you want to bring the, ca the camera around back, Caleb, this silver piece right in here doesn't look like it's doing anything. Well, it is because that silver piece looks like it looks like an L. It's essentially got a little tab at the top of it that rides in a groove in that male pivot post. So that's your locking pin or your locking tab, we're going to call it locking tab. It's got that little L shape that's inserted into a groove. So the pivot post is one solid thing, except it's got a groove around the top. The L is in that groove, so it's holding this from coming up. Once we remove these bolts, take a little, you know, your pocket knife or whatever and kind of flip that thing out of there. That thing will just go blink, it'll fall out on the ground. And then the handlebars pick right up off the pivot post. There's nothing else holding them on there. You can turn them upside down, put penetrating oil in to, you know, to get a broken or a, a, a seized pin loose. Now, if you want to avoid a seized pin, use lubricants, Teflon, uh, you know, graphite, silicon, whatever lubricant is a good long lasting lubricant and just occasionally spray it in the top here, you know, around where this cable meets the top and let it ooze down in there and keep that pin lubricated. You'll notice all the new tractors we sell are always gooey there because I lubricate that before it goes out the door. So you're good for at least a year. Sorry, I was wiping my hands. Now we'll move up the handlebars. So you've also got an adjustment on these handlebars up and down. That's uh, obviously achieved by the handles, the handlebar, the round stock moving within this housing. What affixes it in there are just U-bolts. So if you bring the camera around to the bottom, you can see that these, these the nuts we see on the top are just the ends, the terminating ends of these U-shaped bolts on the bottom. They're just wrapped underneath the handlebars and holding the, uh, holding the bars up onto the bottom of this column. So what happens is the U-bolts eventually wear. They kind of get a flat spot worn on them. The handlebars themselves wear a little bit where the U-bolt is up against it, and you just get slopped there. And so one day you notice that your handlebars move, clunk, 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 and the handle column isn't even moving. You've just got all the slop is right up here. So no problem. These are lock nuts. They stay wherever you put them and you just put your wrench on and snug them up a little bit. Snug them up evenly. You know, if you're tightening one, tighten all four, just about the same amount. Essentially, you want those, you want these nuts tight enough that when you push down the handle release lever, the handles stay where they are. They don't just drop by gravity. The weight of the handlebars should not just make these things fall down. If they do, if you push this down and the handles just drop straight down, these nuts are way too loose. You need to tighten those things up. Again, before I, before I tighten those up, I always make sure they're well lubricated. We've got grease on here from factory. You can see I've already sprayed that down. It's all gooey up there because that's a point of friction. You know, you want to keep some lube there. So lube them up good, snug them up until they stay in position. And you actually have to, if you want to adjust them down, you should have to push them down. I mean, you don't have to, you know, get a 50 pound weight on it or anything or break your, break your arms, but it should be tight enough that it stays in whatever position you put it in. I'm going to tighten those up just a smidge more, actually. And again, if you should need to replace anything here in terms of these components, we actually have a video specific to replacing this spring uh, because that's kind of a booger to get back in there. Um, if uh, we've had some problems on the Grillo with people breaking this little bolt or pin here, this is, this is the, the bolt or pin that locks into one of these cutouts. That's what holds your handlebars in whatever height position you're in. In fact, if you bring the candle over to the side, or the camera rather, you can see these little notched cutouts. This, this pin is going to fit up into one of those, and that's what orients you in whatever height position you're in. Well, 
The original pins just weren't hard enough, so we replaced them with a hardened steel bolt, and that works a lot better. But still, we have people who uh, can occasionally break those, and usually it's a case where they've let these pivot bolts get so loose that the handlebars are flopping around in this carrier area here, and when, when the handlebars are able to move in that area, they're not putting even pressure on the pin. When the handlebars offset to one side because of the slop, it's all on one side of the pin instead of evenly distributed across the pin. So you'll break the pin. So if you're having problems breaking this pin, tighten these up to, to get the handlebars to stop slopping around. And then the problem will go away. So I think that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching.